Makuda is transported to another world but ends up with cooking powers and is disappointed, but they get him the attention of a legendary monster. We're back with another interesting story. Before we move on, hit the subscribe button to show your love. Let's get started. The story begins with Tsuyoshi Makuda, who's simply known as Makuda, being summoned from Japan to an alternate world with three others to become heroes of the Reisager Kingdom. All of them are received with a great pampador and are quickly assessed for powers, but it turns out, unlike the others who have desirable skills in swordsmanship and magic, Makuda only possesses the online grocery scale that lets him spend money to summon food and online products from Japan. Makuda is disappointed and asks them to recheck, but is told once more that his only unique skill is online grocery. However, this helps Makuda out in an unimaginable ways and saves him from the nasty fate. Sensing that the Ray Sager royals are untrustworthy, Makuda convinces them that his skill is absolutely useless and accepts money to quietly disappear. He does a bit of snooping around and confirms that the royals are Terrence. He abandons the kingdom of Ray Sager and hires a company, Werner and his Iron Will Adventures, to escort him to the neighboring Venan Kingdom. Makuda provides them food with a skill and prepares meals on a modern camping stove, which they are astounded by. Makoda discovers Japanese ingredients boost health and magic and decides to use only ingredients forged by hand in case people discover his skill and try to take advantage of him. One night, Makoda's cooking attracts Fenrir, a legendary wolf monster, who demands to taste the food. Trembling, Makoda relents. In an amazing turn of events, Fenrir is so impressed by Makoda's cooking that he insists on becoming Makoda's contracted familiar in exchange for three meals a day. Calculating the cost of feeding his new Fenrir, Makoda realizes he needs employment immediately if he's to honor the contract. The episode begins as Makoda names the Fenrir Fell. Werner, the leader of Makoda's escort company that brought him to Ray Sager to Vinan, tells him that entering Vinan will be difficult as Fell the Fenrir is part of a race of legendary monsters and sure to draw attention. Fell, however, agrees to hunt for their meat as long as Makoda cooks it, which also saves Makoda money. Fell does draw attention at the border but is still allowed to enter Venon due to his familiar contract. Makoda decides to register at the Merchant's Guild, intending to use online grocery to become a traveling trader and see the world. As Makoda sets out on his journey as a traveling trader, he realizes that he needs to be more cautious and watchful, as Venon is full of people with different intentions. However, before he can start operating in a proper fashion, Makoda receives an invitation to meet Margrave Lendel but refuses. Makoda registers as an iron rack merchant, which gives him the license to run a mobile training stall between different cities. He discovers that items like salt and pepper purchased from online grocery for 10 copper coins are rare commodities and sells a bag of each to the guild master himself for 17 gold. After that, he joins the Adventurer's Guild to sell valuable monster parts left over from Fel's meals, but learns he must complete at least one quest a month to maintain his membership as a condition. Hoping to keep it simple, he accepts a basic seeming quest to gather plants with medical properties. Werner and his friends decide to depart and express hope of seeing Makoda again, already missing his presence and exceptional cooking skills. The episode pans out as Makoda completes the quest for acquiring medical plants quickly. And while Fel hunts more monster mate, he's able to use discounted ingredients to make spaghetti. Makoda, being a compassionate person, is disturbed as Oryx, which possesses a more humanoid appearance in that world, are an acceptable food source that even humans eat with great relish. In a new level of trust, Fel the Fenrir starts letting Makoda ride on his back to make traveling faster than ever. Makoda's relationships improve as the Adventure Guild secretary Bianca, despite her abrasive personality, develops a soft spot for Fel, which amazes Makoda. As Makoda adjusts to his new routine, he has the monsters butchered, keeps their meat and sells the rest of the body parts for 200 gold. With Fel drawing so much attention, Makoda decides it's safer and within their best interest to claim that he's a great wolf, not a Fenrir. The Butcher explains to Makoda that the value of monster parts is often underestimated by amateurs, which increases Makoda's knowledge. Makoda also discovers, despite expectations and his initial reservations, that orc meat is even tastier than pork. Due to his newfound wealth, Makoda celebrates by introducing Fel to Japanese Wagyu beef. Unfortunately, such high-quality Japanese meat boosts Fel's stats to high, he hunts even stronger monsters all night, including a rare orc general an Arank Ogre and even the legendary Chimera. 
Exacerbated by how many valuable monsters he needs butchered, Makoto decides to never feed Fel Wagyu beef again. The episode begins as Makoto discovers that he can use magic, but it's extreme, even pathetically weak. Makoto's excitement over discovering his magic is understandably short-lived as he struggles to use it for any good purpose. Fel, who is skilled in combat, encourages Makoto to train and improve his abilities. Makoto is reluctant but eventually agrees to Fel's plan. Delighted with this development, Fel, firmly believing that combat is the way to improve magic using capabilities, forces a protesting Makoto to fight a goblin village. During the battle, Makoto levels up his fire magic but ends up fainting from the strain, requiring Fel to save him from trouble. Nonetheless, Fel rewards his effort by hunting a goblin king, which, while inedible, contains a valuable magic stone. Too exhausted to cook because of the rigors of battle, Makoto feeds Fel dessert pastries which are accepted by the Fenrir. As Makoto and Fel communicate, Fel reveals he's blessed by Ninrir, the wind goddess, making wind magic his strongest element. Encouraged and a little bit envious because of the smug Fel, Makoto calls out for any goddess to give him a blessing, not actually expecting a response. In another plane, a goddess actually hears his plaintive request. To keep from wandering aimlessly, Fel and Makoto set out, and finally they enter a town to buy a map, but are surprised to learn that due to the number of wars in the land, accurate maps of the world are national secrets which perplexes Makoto. At a pub, Makoto manages to buy a map showing the general location of the kingdoms and their dungeons for one goal. However, after talking to some adventurers, Makoto learns that he was swindled since maps are a basic item available at all guilds for one silver. Resigned to his fate and having acquired a map, Makoto decides to head east to a kingdom by the ocean. The episode opens and it's seen that Nenrir, the wind goddess that blessed Fel, develops a personal interest in Makoto. During travel, Fel insists he and Makoto rest by a lake so Makoto can cook fish for eating. Whilst there, Makoto discovers an odd slime monster that can eat anything and helpfully devours the packaging his online orders arrived in. Fel surprisingly reveals the slime monster likes Makoto, which for such a simple monster constitutes a contract. Makoto accepts the contract and names his new familiar Sui, who begins leveling up rapidly when Makoto feeds him actual food. Once Makoto manages to train Sui not to eat his utensils, Sui is able to do the washing up, which greatly helps Makoto. Meanwhile, Ninrir, the goddess, sends Fel a revelation that she will grant Makoto her blessing to increase his magic and resistance to injury in exchange for an offering of sweets once a week. Delighted, Makoto makes an offering of sweet buns, his very first offering, and is granted the blessing. However, Ninrir, who's a young goddess with a severe sweet tooth, devours the buns and begins sending Makoto revelations every few days, which are a little more than lists of sweets that she wants. She's very fickle and throws tantrums when he tries to stick to their deal of one offering per week. Despite the blessing, Fel is disappointed by Makoto's progress with combat magic and finally decides to take him to a special area where his abilities would improve rapidly, even if it means putting Makoto through his spaces hard. The episode starts as Fel forces Makoto to continue training, and for this purpose, he makes Makoto enter a recently appeared dungeon and fight monsters to rapidly improve his earth magic, which is manifested as Stone Bullet. Makoto therefore prepares by eating Japanese ingredients for the temporary statistics boost. Fel then tells Makoto to fight alone, which proves to be a challenge, but once forced to fight without Fel's assistance, Makoto becomes more proficient at Stone Bullet and becomes able to fire three bullets simultaneously at last. While he's going through this, he also discovers that Sui, his slime monster familiar, is useful in combat with strong acid bullets being Sui's specialty. After defeating an army of kobolds in a particularly fierce battle, Makoto is confronted by the dungeon boss, Kobold King, who is enraged and quite beside himself by the death of his army. A gruesome fight begins, and Makoto desperately upgrades Stone Bullet to Stone Cannon and manages to injure the Kobold King, but runs out of magic at a crucial moment. However, Sui proves loyalty to Makoto and kills the king instead and levels up while Makoto passes out. After awakening, Makoto discovers Sui can now speak in a childlike manner and refers to an outraged Fel as Uncle Fel, and while they have both leveled up, Makoto is disappointed to learn that Sui is actually stronger than he is. Nevertheless, Makoto still treats everyone to huge helpings of oyakodon made with stat-boosting Japanese ingredients and enjoys a good meal with his familiars.